I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another special edition of the show. I've got um, uh, Joseph Bouchard uh, here with Chateau Pensy uh, here in Fleury. Did I say it all pretty good? Hello. hello. <laughs> um, so uh, he's been very kind to spend uh, some time with me uh, walking the vineyards, uh, talking to me about the area and um, taking me to the winery and really just talking about these wines that uh, we're about to uh, also uh, enjoy. And uh, I'm real excited about it. So, uh, Joseph, first, uh, let's start with um, uh, you and how did you, how, um, obviously, you're, you're part of the, the Bouchard family. Yeah. Um, tell me how, how you started in, in the industry. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. I start the story in 2009. And uh, the Oreo family buys this estate in uh, 2008. So um, I'm coming to, to restart the, the vineyard, to restart the, pro the property, to make a new, new plantation and um, all the start of the, of the vineyard. Uh, for the story, this uh, property was in the Bouchard family from uh, uh, eight. Uh, 1880. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> How long? Eight, eight, 1880. 18, 1880. 18, 18, 18, okay, yeah. got it. And um, the Oreo family uh, buys this estate in 2009. Eight, sorry. Okay. Eight. And you were telling me actually, um, well, this we're kind of jumping ahead, but uh, when, just because I'm thinking about it now, uh, about the bottling that you take the, the very, the, back in the early last century they did the same thing they would do actually bottle we'll, we'll get to that yes later. we'll get to that later it's not really the right time yes. to talk about it <laughs> okay so the onrio uh, family bought this in 2008 and then you started here in 2009 yes um and then um I'm kind of sweating a little bit because i walked around um <laughs> but uh um and you're in the process of 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 uh replanting some of the vineyards yes um, you're showing me that uh, some of the vineyards are in what's called a goblet yes the yeah. the traditional way of uh, production in uh, Beaujolais is mm -hmm. uh, for the gamma grapes is a goblet pruning the name is goblet and uh, it's a very short pruning very poor, uh, near the soil so um, it's uh, this is the old way of production so yeah. it's very difficult today to to walk in organic way in this parcel because it's not possible to pass with machine with tractor all is manual right. so it's very hard and it's not possible to to walk this parcel today yeah so we start to replant in a new way of production they're, they're really they're about this high the the, the vines yes they're, they're, so if you can picture the the, the a, a vine that's only about this high and that you have to bend over all day to work the vines, whether it's picking or pruning or, or taking care yeah. of it, it's very, in English we call it backbreaking work because you're, yeah. yeah. Um, but now you, you're you doing more of a normal uh, trellising um, with with the vines yes. uh, higher up and with the- Yeah, it's just uh, to, ma to maximize the leaf area right. to, 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 to increase the, the quality of the grapes mm -hmm. and increase the quality of the wine, okay. yes. And you've been doing uh, organic farming for a few years now? Yes, we start the conversion in an organic way. So it takes three, time, three years to, to make the conversion. So we are in the movement. And uh, next year we, we can put on label uh, the organic, uh, okay. organic uh, label. And you're showing me uh, the, you have the compost that you use. Uh, what, uh, how is it, what are the, what do you, what are the ingredients of the yeah, compost? Yeah, we, we blend um, the, the grape matter mm -hmm. uh, after the fermentation and the, um, the co-manner 
and uh, we blend together mm -hmm. to, to during uh, three or four months to make compost okay. to fertilize the parcel. Okay, so you have uh, the what's left over from the from the fermentation from the grapes, the the rest of the skins and the stems and yes, the, all the pips and all that, and then you have the cow manure um, that you combine, and then because we saw uh, you have about three big areas that you just and it just kind of does it like ferment also like like yeah. like grapes like over a few months that it, it yes it, everything integrates you take time you take time to go together and to 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 mature okay yeah and then you you'll spread that into the vineyards to, to yeah help. Uh, as, as a fertilizer. A yes, because fertilizer. here the soil is only granite sand and on granite little rock, so it's very, very poor, mm -hmm. so it, it needs organic matter in quantity, so we can put the, the compost is a natural organic matter. Right. It's the best fertilization that we can put into on the vineyard. Right. Um, so you've, you've got uh, how many hectares of vineyard? We have 45 hectares, okay. so uh, we have a, a, a program of plantation, of mm -hmm. free plantation. So we, are, we, we have five hectares in, not in production okay. because it takes time. They are in a repos mm -hmm. uh, during two years before okay. planting a new parcel. Okay. So um, we have, uh, in production, we have four, 40 hectares. Okay. And you're also showing me in the vineyards, um, the, the newer... Uh, parcels, not the parcels, the newer uh, uh, exposure. Uh, the that you have a you putting wheat. Yes. In, in between yes. the vines, so you have like a cover crop. So kind of explain why. Yeah, because uh, the the soil is very poor. It's only sand, so it and the steeper slope. Mm -hmm. So it, there is a big problem here. Is the er erosion mm -hmm. uh, when it's raining. On, uh, on summer, so we we need to maintain the soil to maintain the the fertility and uh, not the soil the soil going down. Okay. So we put um, a cover on the summer on on uh, yeah we put a cover on the soil right. to maintain the soil. Right. And uh, we just uh, walk the soil with machine. We cut the grass just okay. under the the line of the of the plant. Okay. Um, and then, so we, you showed me, um, so we have the, the first part, which is near where we're sitting, uh, that set of, uh, vineyards that's facing, let's see if I can remember where it's facing. Fleury. Yeah, Fleury. And then. On the other side is Moulavon. No, no, the, this, this side over here. Yeah. So we had Fleury and then. Uh, Morgon. Down. Morgon, the famous Côte du Pie. Right. Morgon. Côte du Pie and then Morgon. Yes. yes. So this is the, um. Uh, the more west and south facing yes um, uh, vineyards, and then on the other side you have the the, the side that faces Moulin-Laurent. Yes. Okay. So we have different exposure, mm -hmm. different altitude. So we have south exposure on the bottom of the of the castle. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, higher altitude. We have the the east altitude, the east, east exposure on the higher altitude on the ODP. Mm -hmm. uh, just under the tree at uh, 400 meters of altitude, right. at the same altitude as the Madone of Fleury. Right. And uh, we have um, the, the last one, the, um, more, the name is uh, Murier, is uh, uh, facing Moulin Avant, mm -hmm. uh, north, northeast exposure. Right. Yeah. And uh, so those are the ones that, the ones that are facing Moulin Avant, those are usually the last. Well, yeah. not the very last, but one of the later yes um, uh, vineyards that you that you harvest. The the late, latest uh, vineyard is uh, ODP mm -hmm. because it's higher in altitude, so it takes time. Right. And they, it takes time to maturity because uh, it's very fresh. Right. But it's source exposure, so um, it's a very good uh, maturity, but it takes time. Okay. Very interesting. And. I should have probably explained to everybody, um, if you don't already know, that Gamay is the grape we're talking about here in Beaujolais. Uh, we're not talking Pinot Noir. Um, and uh, uh, you also have um, a little bit of Chardonnay, right? Yes. Okay. We have uh, just one parcel on, on Chardonnay. We plant in, uh, in 15 because in this parcel, it's the bottom of parcel of a hill. 
So um, by the erosion, the clay going down. Right. So it's now the clay is on, on the bottom of the hill. So in this parcel, we prefer to to to, to make a, um, a challenge, a test to to planting Chardonnay on this parcel. Okay. To see what Chardonnay is there a Chardonnay in Burgundy? Is there a Chardonnay in south of uh, Beaujolais? But uh, why it's not possible to plant Chardonnay in Fleury. So we start to, to make uh, this parcel in Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we plant, uh, today we have two hectares, but not in production, two right. hectares um, in Chardonnay grapes. Uh, so the appellation of Chardonnay grapes here is, is uh, Beaujolais Village Blanc. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, not that if we say it's that close, but it's not very far away. I mean, you're, you're, yes, you know. we are from Macon on the Solutre and the Pouilly Fusset. We, we are. We just have, uh, I think, uh, five kilometers. Um, yeah, it's not very far. Yes. Yeah. So not that you couldn't do Chardonnay here. I'd be really interested in a few years to to, to see yes. how that turns out. Um, so we uh, we walked the vineyards and we went all the way up to the top, and I can tell you that the view is spectacular. It's amazing. Um, I probably have already put pictures in, in you know, put pictures in here during the yeah. video to show everybody these things. Um, and I can tell you that, um, like I said, when I first got here, I didn't realize how high, how tall the, the, they're not mountains, the hills are. Um, if you live in San Antonio, these are, these are mountains cause we don't have hills, <laughs> <laughs> but it's very similar to the hill country of Texas. Um, very, very tall hills. These are even higher. Um, I, I knew there were hills, but I thought they were more, they were lower and, uh, it's pretty spectacular, yeah. um, the whole area. Um, so we finished walking through the vineyards and then, um, we, we came back, um, uh, down the road back to here and you, you showed me the, you have a scale, right? Uh, 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 for, for the trucks when they come in, you yeah. can, you can see how much, how many tons of grapes you have. Yes. Um, so that was, that was, that it's called a scale in English. So that's been there for a very long time. That was yes, the ma the machine to AV the mm -hmm. yes. We 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 want to use this machine because it it was here. I don't know how many how many times, but it's it, it functions today. Right. Yes. So we can use we can AV the, the harvest, and uh, with this I know all the 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 AV of the harvest of each parcel that I have in the winery. So I know the the weight of each tank. Right. So it's very interesting for me so for the the fermentation or the vinification. Yeah, and I stood on it and I didn't break it. I'm not. I'm not five tons. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 so I, on a personal level, I'm trying to lose weight for the past two or three, well, about three months, and I've been very successful. But I'm sure I gained a lot of it this last week. So I can tell I've definitely I'm, I'm wearing the big pants today. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we did that, and they showed me I have a park over here, a little uh, a, a park. Yes, yeah. there's a park. Yes, we have some uh, into the park in front of the castle. We have some uh, some animals. Mm -hmm. We have some sheep. They, they maintain the grass very short. Yeah. And we have some some uh, chicken or other animals right. uh, into the park. Yeah. Yeah. This, I think the sheep were sleeping today, but I heard the rooster and I saw a little chicken way out in the distance. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Um, and then um, we went over into. He showed me the castle, and uh, he told he told me that there's really not much. Um, you're not really using it, but you're, yes. re you're renovating it, right? You yes, we start the renovation, it. yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, we went to the winery, and you showed me that you have uh, both steel and concrete. So kind of tell me about the tanks and, and the process once the grapes once the grapes are weighed, what do you do next? Yeah, um, we, we make the harvest manually in little case. Mm -hmm. um, 12, 12 kilo around per, per case, okay. and uh, we put all these cases in, in tractor. We heavy the, each tractor, and after we 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 put the case on the uh, selection table mm -hmm. with manual selection. Well, six six people to 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 select uh, the the good grapes or not. Okay. And uh, after we um, we make a, cho uh, a choice if we distem or not. Okay. And um, it depends on the maturity of the grapes, uh, maturity of the grapes. And uh, I I like to make some um, some tank 
with um, an half of the production with um, with uh, this stem or not. Okay. So it depends on the maturity, but um, for a good um, aeration during the fermentation, mm -hmm. they need some some uh, some rate. Okay. Yes. And uh, did you say that, you, that um, if I remember correctly, uh, in the tanks you'll usually have the grapes with the stems on the bottom and the grapes without yes. the stems on top. Yeah, and that helps with the firm, that helps with the the fermentation. Yes, this mm -hmm. helps the fermentation because there is a um, place for for aeration mm -hmm. into the rapes okay. on the bottom and on the top of the of the tank. We we make uh, punching by uh, feet. Right. Yes, we make pijage. The name in pijage. Pijage. Yeah. Yes, by feet. Uh, in the in the middle of the fermentation is a uh, one or two times per day. Okay. In the middle of the fermentation, and one time at the at the at the end. Yes. Okay. So um, the the tanks do they they don't have a top? They're open on top. Yeah. The, we didn't talk yes, about they're, they're open. Right. Yeah. yeah that's, they're open. Otherwise, it's going to be hard for someone to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so because of this, um, this is definitely there's definitely no carbonic maceration really no. going on. Right, so you don't have a closed tank to do anything. Yeah, we make the the, the traditional uh, fermentation. Right. We find into the we find in, into the the, the 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 winery when we buy the estate in the, in the corner uh, we find an old machine an old distemmer. Okay. Uh, today is is in, is in uh, the grenier is on the top, but uh, that's the reason that. For the past, I think uh, 200 uh, years past, in the past, they distem. So mm -hmm. there was no maceration, uh, carbonic maceration in the Beaujolais for the past. Right, yeah. Um, and that, and this is really, I, I mention this more so that people understand that not all Beaujolais has carbonic maceration. Yes. Um, I mean, it's, it's really only... I don't want to say it's a small. There's there's a very large production like just the regular Beaujolais yeah. uh, for the Nouveau and all that. It depends on the products that we want to 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 make. Yeah, um, yeah. So I just wanted people to understand that not not all Beaujolais has carbonic or semi carbonic maceration. Um, which um, if you also to explain to some of my viewers, because not everyone is a winemaker or in the industry. Yeah, carbonic maceration just means you're in a closed tank and the grapes uh, naturally crush each other, um, and then there's a carbon dioxide cap. And it helps keep the oxygen out, and there's it, it produces a different type of flavor profile, um, and that's why Beaujolais Nouveau tastes the way it does. Um, it, it, very fruity and very bubble gum and banana and all that kind of stuff. Um, so then uh, you go through that, and it's about twelve. You said about twelve days total yes. for the fermentation. Twelve, yeah, twelve. Uh, okay, fifty days, yeah. Okay, and then uh, once you're done with that, uh, it goes through. Did it go through, does it go through the malolactic during that time or is it after the time? After, after 12 yes. Months? Okay. And then once that's finished, um, you'll take, uh, you, you do take the pressed juice and then the free run juice. Yes. And you do combine them. Okay. So, and just all to explain, because sometimes I don't explain wine making a lot. There's, with red wine, you'll have um, the, from the regular just natural crushing, yeah. um, you'll get juice that's called free run and then then you'll have what's left over and then you'll press it again to get the rest of the juice. And some people separate it and other people combine it and you combine yeah. the two the two juices. Um, and then after that, you'll um, uh, it gets basically sent to bone for bottling, right? Well, not yes. bottling, but for aging for yes. a while, right? We, we, today we finish the aging in bone. We start the aging here in tank mm -hmm. or in barrels, it depends on the feature. But... Um, we finish the aging in bone. The aging is during uh, eight months or um, twelve months. Okay. And um, uh, we bottle because we bottling in bone. Right. Yes. It's just easier for you to do it. Yes. There. You don't really have the the room, the facility to do it here. Yeah. And then the aging in barrel, um, they're neutral. They're they're older barrels. Yes, old old barrel right. because Gamma Graves doesn't like uh, new oak. It right. takes wood very easy, so it's more strong. Right, yeah. So yeah. you don't want to really alter the flavor and the aroma of, of the gamay with newer, yeah. with newer oak. Um, 
well, I think I think we kind of talked about everything, didn't we? Yeah, I think yeah. we did. <laughs> yeah, so we find we find um, we find an article yes. from uh, from uh, the now start of the, the yeah, yeah. last century, and uh, that that explains that we we make today the, the same thing that uh, on the past because. Uh, we, we find that uh, in uh, 1923, uh, yeah. they, they make the, the bottling in bone too. So the, the, it, it was the same thing today that uh, 100 uh, yeah, years, years yeah. yes, before. So yes, yeah, so there's nothing unusual to, to do that. So um, I think we should maybe try some wine. Try some wine. Try, try some wine. We got some. Yes, here. but don't, I don't have the twenty-three. <laughs> yeah, that might. I don't know how good it would be, but you know, <laughs> it might be really good. Have you had any really, really old vintage? When, when, when the when uh, Joseph Ario buys the uh, Chateau de Pontier in two thousand nine, mm -hmm. they um, they find in the in the cellar in Bone under the castle, mm -hmm. they find a bottle. They, they have some bottle of uh, twenty nine. Wow, twenty nine. Yes, <laughs> and uh, they, I don't try, but they tell me that it was uh, very incredible. Yes. Wow. Well, that would be interesting. So, what are we trying here? This one is uh, Le Pré Roi on 14. Okay. I see it. Le Pré Roi. Okay. Yes. Le Pré Roi is a blending of different parcels just around the castle. Okay. I can show you on, on the map. Okay. Maybe yes. Right? This is a map. This is awesome. So, Le pré -Roi is a blending of different parcels. This is the castle, this okay. is uh, the winery. Okay. And Le pré -Roi is the, the parcel under the park. This parcel just uh, on the, the, size of, um, the two sides of the, uh, the tree alley. Okay. And uh, this parcel. Okay. The parcel just under the, the castle. Very nice. This is an awesome map. Yes, <laughs> this is a map on uh, uh, 1980, okay. when the Beauchamp family buy Chateau de Pontier. Okay, got it. So folks, I just want to realize that, you know, yesterday I was in Chablis, today I'm in Beaujolais, and these are the two extremes of Burgundy. Um, even though Beaujolais kind of is on its own, it's legally in, the, uh, in Burgundy. These are the two things of Burgundy I love the most. Um, and I told Joseph that, you know, Chablis is, is, is what I love of Chardonnay more than anything else. And while I do like Burgundy and this trip really, really has has uh, been very enlightening and very eye-opening. And I drank a lot of Pinot Noir and Burgundian Chardonnay uh, the last week, pretty much. Um, I, I love Beaujolais. I love everything about it, the smells, the, the tastes. Um, I, I just think it, there's so much expression from from these wines, so I'm super excited to yeah. to be here and, and be able to experience this. Beaujolais area is very amazing, beautiful place, and uh... it is it is absolutely beautiful here. I I, so, I was totally un, did not expect how how nice it was going to look here. That's the reason that the Bouchard family buys this estate in uh, in the 19, in 1980 mm -hmm. because um, in Beaujolais there is a very uh, a very good terroir. The soil is very very beautiful, right. and the gamay grapes is very good. So um, it's a, a beautiful area, and that's the reason that uh, Joseph Ario want to buy this estate too. Mm -hmm. What I love about Beaujolais in general is just this explosion of spice and there's an earthiness to it. Um, there's a rustic um, quality to it. Um, there's, I, I just find it, it's, it's not that it's more complex or, or than, than Pinot Noir, but it's a different complexity. Um, and I've had some Pinot Noirs that are pretty amazing too. So I don't want to ever, anyone ever think that I'm putting down 
Pinot Noir is a, is a great in general. Yeah. Uh, my, my favorite expression still is probably Oregon, and then after that would be Burgundy. Uh, California, there's definitely some good California Pinots out there, but my my personal preference, or I'm not, I don't really care for a lot of Pinot Noir from California. Then again, a lot of the Pinot Noir from California I've had is very mass produced, yeah. and it's, no. Um, but, uh, you know, Beaujolais, I just, I think it's great. Also, it's just, um, again, remember, it's not the same grape as, as Burgundy, but it's, it's as far as close to the area, price point, it's definitely a great alternative um, to the very pricey Pinot Noirs up the road. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fruity, mm -hmm. very soft tannin. Right. Yes. That's the reason that we like the, the pushing by feet, because uh, it's very soft extraction. Mm -hmm. oh, this one is 14. 14 is very fresh here. Yeah. I get lots of floral out of it. I get lots of dried fruit. Um, uh, not, not, not like dried fruit like, um, like you get out of an amarone or something like that, but you know, drier, drier expressions of the fruit, um, and just tons of spice, um, and just, you know, uh, uh, the expression that we use sometimes in English is uh, Christmas spices or Christmas oh, okay. fruit, uh, uh, spices used for, for baking uh, Christmas items. Um, and this is just spectacular. Let's just talk about this year's harvest, because uh, we, we did talk about that up in the vineyard. Um, what happened... Um, it was in June, July. What happened here? Yeah, it, um, fourteen is a. Um, it was a an easy year, but mm -hmm. because it's raining, the the sun raining sun very easy, but it takes time. So the harvest is very later mm -hmm. on uh, on fourteen. So. Um, it take it take time, it, but uh, it was very interesting, very beautiful maturity because very complete maturity. Mm -hmm. um, the gamma grapes take time to 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 go to the best maturity. Okay, yeah. did it um, was it a later harvest for you in fourteen? Um, I think it's uh, 16, 16, Yes. Uh, at the the end of uh, September. In the September, okay. And the early, it's uh, 2009. Uh, 2009, yes, in okay. August. Okay. And wow. uh, August, yes, in August, and um, on 15, it was in mm -hmm. August too, uh, 28 in August. So. Right. Yeah. And this year, when? And this year, we start uh, at the start of September. Okay. Yes. And then this year, you had some hail, right? Yes. Oh. We have two times a big hail that uh, it destroy um, a big part of the production. It destroy the 70% per, uh, 70 of mm -hmm. the production, yes. So very small production this year on 17, but right. very good, good in quality because um, very beautiful maturity. Right. So it's a stress in world for water, but uh, very, very interesting. And is hail a, a something that's common here in Beaujolais? Is it something that happens very, very, um, very often? Often, yes, like, because last year in, in uh, 16, we have the, the hail, hail too, too yeah. yes. But we are, we are lucky because all the village of Fleury, so one, 200 meters, mm -hmm. it was very, already destroyed. There is nothing. Right. And here we have a, a, a harvest. Right. Yes. Normal harvest, yes. And, um, and but this year, this year all the, um, the Fleury area was destroyed. Mm -hmm. And the Moulin Avant too, right. Moulin Avant Chena was destroyed right. too, yes. Um, and then did you have any of the similar problems in the winter time that your neighbors up in Burgundy and Chablis had with, with the frost or no. you? Yeah, we don't have frost uh, problem because we are uh, in the south of okay. the Burgundy. We are here, the climate is uh, more, more, more dry, more okay. thick, and um, we don't have the, the, the frost uh, risk. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good, at least. <laughs> yes, but yeah, the, 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 
we have the hell and the, the dryness. Okay, yes. right. This is our small one here. We are going to taste the same one, okay. but on 15. 15, okay. Yes. So 15 is very particular here yeah, because very, very dry, very, very hot. Mm -hmm. Did you get uh, more uh, ripeness or the, um, the riper, riper grapes? It's the, no, the no, it's the same, the same um, blending of um, ripe or distem or not. Okay. No, so there is no big difference. But the difference here, it's um, there is a dryness. Uh, the soil is very, very dry since there was uh, the, the, um, the pruning. The, um, in in April and May, okay. There is no water. No water, right? Just uh, until the the harvest. Okay, so no rain from May until yes, till August, yes. Till harvest. Yes. So that's the reason that there is this concentration, this. Um, Extreme maturity. Okay. It's it's a beautiful uh, millezim, but it's not a normal millezim for the okay. Beaujolais. He's saying vintage or year in French, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> I know enough to know. When, when yeah. <laughs> the not normal maturity. It's mm -hmm. uh, it, it's uh, more fruity, more fresh. But this year we. Uh, it's like a port. It's like a port wine. Uh, port? Okay, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I can see that, actually. There's a richness to it. Um, I mean, we're talking the same areas, just a different year, but there's definitely a, a, a richer um, quality to it. They, um, uh, the fruit is actually more prominent. Um, it's not as dried. It's actually fresher. Um, yeah, it's not. It's the fruit is not as dry. It's it's it's, yeah. a, it's a fresher, almost like I think it's a juicier wine. Um, yeah, absolutely. The yield on this year on fifteen is around. Uh, 20 hectoliters per hectare. Okay. And normally it's uh, 45. Oh, wow. So, yeah. The grapes are very small, like mm -hmm. berry, like very, very small and very contract. Um, the, the grapes that we saw in the vineyard, is that about the size that they were? Yes. 15? Yeah. I got to eat some of those. That was cool. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, just a, just a, out of curiosity, because I saw it in, on the con concrete tanks, I see it on the walls here, is uh, Villa Ponciago is is that an older name or is that a yes? Okay. Villa Ponciago is we, we find this name um, in the the historical uh, text. Okay. And um, the story is uh, in 1949. Okay. We find a text that um, in 1949 the the property was um, giving was a. Uh, Offering to the monk of Cluny. Okay. Um, it was the property of a local uh, important people. Okay. And they offer this uh, property Villa, uh, on the name Villa Ponciago uh, in 1949 to the monk of Cluny to, to have a place on the parody. Okay. Yeah, it's a beautiful story. So that's the reason that we want to. to to, to put uh, this name in, in, in value because it's uh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. now, there is uh, 1,000 of story in this property. It's uh, amazing. Wow, 1,000 years of history here? Yeah. yeah well, it did. 1949. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. That is awesome. Yeah, I meant to ask you that when we were in, in there um, about the name because I saw it and I was like, wait a minute, I thought it was Ponce. Was Ponciago. Yeah. <laughs> and today we, we want to, to have uh, Chateau de Poncier because he, 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 he 
better to have uh, to to put this caster in mm -hmm. the right okay on the top and i mean i didn't really have both wines in the glass but what's left over um there's even a color difference um there's this, this was definitely a lighter in color than this yes. one you know again you have more concentration yes on, on this year this one is uh, Around 45 degree, no, 35 on this one, and 40 on this one, 14, okay. 14. Yeah, we had, yeah, this was only 12 and a half. Yes. Um, so you have, a, you had an extra degree of alcohol. Yes. Okay. Because the normal maturity is very, very, very up. So you... you are your wines normally closer to this as far as alcohol or normally closer to 13? No, normally this you, one, yes, yes. So On 15, very, very beautiful millésime, but uh, mm -hmm. it's not a normal millésime for the Beaujolais area. Right. It's like uh, 2003 in Burgundy. Yeah. The, um, it's, it's not normal maturity, but uh, very interesting. And this also brings up another point that um, you don't need 15% alcohol to have great wine. Um, I mean, most the wines of, of France in general, especially when we're talking uh, uh, longer time ago, um, before things got warmer and maturity and the grapes got more mature, um, 12 and a half, 13% is, was normal, you yeah. know, for for alcohol. So. You don't need high, high alcohol. I mean, that's it, it's it's a function of where you're at in the world. I mean, your what what nature's giving you that your grapes are going to get to a certain ripeness level or a certain sugar level to give you that alcohol. Um, but yeah, you just it, for for those of you that are used to seeing 14, 14 and a half, 15 and higher on the percentage, here's a perfect example of you can get awesome wine that doesn't have a lot of alcohol, and you're not. Tasting the alcohol. Yes. And that's no. what I really like about, no, it's, it's about really... wines from this area. Okay, so, so this this one, mm -hmm. this one is the same the same year. Okay. Fifteen two. Okay. But this is the, the first one is the pré -roi, the pré blending of different parcels around mm -hmm. the castle. And this one is the Salomine. Okay. So Salomine on the map in um, is, is if you remember. It's the parcel at the, at the top, just under the, the forest, the tree. Okay. Uh, 400 meters of higher. The, so, a source exposure, but very higher. So, that was... So, it was this parcel. Okay, over here. This parcel on the top, just under the tree. The, um, it's the last one that we harvest. Because, okay. Uh, for the... Got it. Okay. I get lots of dark fruit on this. Yeah. It's Very extreme, richness. extreme maturity on yeah. this one. Yeah. Another, a lot of richness to it. Um, there's a, a slight creamy quality to it, almost vanilla. Um, almost, not quite, because we're not really talking new oak here, so. But it yeah, seems. There's a, there's a cream quality to it. Yeah. It's like a, a fruit tart or a fruit mm. cake, yes. Very much like that. Because there's even like the the um, uh, cookie quality of the tart part, um, the, the bread quality. I mean, that, it, it, it's very much like a tart, just to to. And to keep freshness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a very good maturity. We we see the source exposure, but the higher of altitude, 
400 meters, keep freshness, keep mineral, minerality. And uh, for me, salomine, it's a good balance between um, acidity and minerality and maturity. Right. And you still have all the, all the spices in there. Um, you know, it's a very spicy wine. Um, it's even at 14%. It's not very hot. I mean, it's not hot. You don't get a lot of heat from the no. alcohol. Um, it's definitely, you can, t if you put the 12 and a half and the 14 together side by side, you can tell there's, there's definitely a, an alcohol difference, but it's well integrated. It's balanced. It's not, I'm not oh, yeah. from alcohol. So no, really. <clears throat> we want to finish the glass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So there is a big potential in Beaujolais, mm -hmm. in the cru, to make very beautiful wine. Well, I can tell you, um, cru Beaujolais is, is, is the way to go, um, or at least at least the village level. Um, but I love the cru Beaujolais. I mean, they just the the quality and the and that the you get out of the wines is incredible. All the ones that I've had. Um, from all the areas, so um, and I'm real excited to to be here and experience it for you know in person. So yeah, um, I think we've pretty much covered everything. Sorry, I think we've I think we've I think we've talked about everything. Yes. Yes. Is there anything that you want to no. say that maybe we haven't uh, talked about? I think we I think we did everything. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> We make a big tour. We visit the winery. Yeah. We see the. We don't see the chi the sheep, but uh, no. Yeah, that's okay. No, I might see. Them. I might see them on my way out. <laughs> um, Joseph, I I want to thank you yet again uh, for your uh, for your kind hospitality and, and taking your time out of your day to uh, thank you too to work with me um, and uh, and show me this beautiful area, your beautiful winery, uh, the land that you have and uh, experience these incredible wines uh, with you. And it's, it's absolutely an honor to do this. And I just want to thank you. Thank you. Again. <laughs> thank you too. Very much. You're welcome. Um, well, folks, that's going to do it. We're going to wrap this up. And uh, uh, as always, I want to thank you all for stopping by. Uh, click the links above to friend me up. Uh, you can click the link below uh, for, for more information about the winery. And um, that's going to do it. Uh, again, thank you all for stopping by, and we'll see everyone again next time. Thank you.